Hi, I'm Nautica De La Cruz, and welcome to the Nautica Show. Here is the Kardashian update. Her 72-day marriage didn't work, but that doesn't stop her from getting new projects. Way to make that money, girl. Tyler Perry has cast Kim in his new film, Marriage Counselor, as he's sticking by his decision even though he's getting some flack for it. Mm, I'm not sure about that one, but I think she'll be some great eye candy for that movie. In other news, Little Kim is writing a new book and a documentary. The rapper has an upcoming release that will focus on her life and comeback after serving a year in prison. This will be Kim's second attempt to being an author. Good luck on that one. Dr. Dre announces break from music making. I'm not sure I'm happy about this one. After working in the industry for 27 years, Dr. Dre feels it's time for a hiatus. Currently, he's working with West Coast up-and-comers Kendrick Lamar and Slim the Mobster. Once those projects are over, Dr. Dre insists that he wants some more family time. Mm, I'm not sure I'm going to sign his permission slip on that. That's your urban news, your naughty news for you. He's known for his trademark song, Cause I Love You. Lenny just finished working with Kenny G, one of my favorite artists, on his big hit, Don't Make Me Wait for Love. His current CD is entitled Unfinished Business. Hmm, I wonder why. You can hear Lenny's voice on many artist projects and be sampled by Kanye West, Twista, Trey Song, Scarface, and many others. You'll be happy to hear that Lenny's new CD will be dropping in the new year, 2012. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my favorite guests, the incomparable and very talented Mr. Lenny Williams, who has a new album called Unfinished Business. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, it's today. definitely my pleasure. Lenny, why is it taking you so long to do, complete this album? Well, you know, you get busy as an artist uh, doing things, um, been writing, been okay. traveling around, doing shows, and uh, I was in about maybe three or four different stage plays, and then you look up and it's like, wow. Uh, I think I got in this business to, to to put out new music. I think that's you know my forte. So uh, so I was like, hey, it's time to time to make a make a CD. Now you said earlier you were doing plays. What made you uh, star in some plays? Was it because of the the acting or the musical aspect of it, or an, uh, a new experience, a new excitement? A little bit of all of that, and then you know the money was good. Okay. And uh, I think what happens with a lot of these plays. Uh, especially when I first got in them, uh, they would uh, get uh, artists that okay. were pretty well known to come out and basically you were there to they give you a small part or uh, I'd say, I won't use the word small, but they'll give you a part with not a lot of uh, verbiage okay. and then uh, to draw the crowd. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got in the plays and I was doing that and the money was nice and give you a little break. And so that was cool. And then I did a play for David Talbert, David mm -hmm. E. Talbert. And so I was looking through it and, and, and I said, okay, I'm looking for my, you know, few words to say. And then there was, uh, I saw my characters like one page, two pages, about five pages straight, you know, of just me. And I was like, oh no, I can't do this. And so David Talbert, uh, I'll just say it in a nice way, uh, coerced me uh, yeah, to, uh, to go ahead and do it. And then that's when I realized that I did have some talent for acting. So I started doing that. And it, you know, it's a nice break, you know, between doing shows okay. and going on the road and just, uh, you know, being in a, in a stage play. Now, can I ask you, and hopefully you're not too insulted, okay. how old are you? I'm, I'll be 67 uh, in February. Uh, uh, if God blesses me to uh, continue living, yeah. And I'm sure he will. Yes. You are 67 years old. You yes. don't even look it. Yeah. I've seen you perform on stage. You have so much energy. What keeps you motivated? And what keeps you going? Well, I have 10 grandkids, you know. Yeah, so uh, that they're always around the house doing their dances and okay. stuff like that. Then I'm, like, trying to learn them. And then I go, you know, to hip-hop classes, or sam samba classes with one of my daughters. And so, you know, just hanging out. And uh, I used to work... Um, with a, a, a youth organization in San Francisco, okay. and we did a lot of um, a work with the probation department, uh, and so I worked with a lot of young people. So the next thing I know, I'd be hanging out with them, and my pants start sagging, or I'm picking up, uh, you know, a lot of the the lingo. And so I think just being around, you know, kids uh, just kind of keeps you keeps you young. Yeah, I see. But my, I have my pull my pants up today. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, well, good. No pants on the ground today. Yes, All sir. right. Yeah. Well, you're a true gentleman. Yes, sir. Well, that's good. It, it does. It, it keeps you motivated and yeah. it keeps you young and it keeps you uh, at good spirit, which is good. And, you know, being surrounded by children is, is, is always one of those that motivate you to do even better. I think so. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, you know, bring the kids around. I, I love it. Mm -hmm. Now, this brand new album, Unfinished Business, why did you call it Unfinished Business? 
Well, because Why of, this title? Well, a lot of times people, they say to me, well, Lenny, uh, when are you going to retire? Or you, have, you, have you had enough? And I'm like, oh, no. I was just, it's a lot of things that I want to do in the music business uh, that I, you know, heretofore I haven't done. Uh, like this record, uh, the CD is on my own label. Okay. So I used to see a lot of the, you know, the, the, the kids, you know, it's like, what, what do you do? Oh, I'm a CEO, you know, it's like, I'm a CEO of my own label. I'm like, oh, I've never done that, you know, and I'd like to try it out and, uh, you know, just see a, how to make a record, you know, from that vantage point, you know, just, you know, selling a record out of, your, out of the trunk of your car or whatever, you know. And so I wanted to, to experience that. So that's something that I've done. And uh, I have to say that I have a, a greater appreciation for record companies now that uh, I've, you know, come at it from that point of view. Record labels now are shrinking and yes. emerging. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the change of the business now uh, than when you were coming up? But yeah, the record companies are shrinking. So I think that this is a, an opportunity for a small business to, to get involved and to, uh, you, know, if, if, you know, if you could sell 100,000 records at mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, $10 a piece or $15 a piece, I mean, you, you, it's, it's a nice piece of change you know, for a two, three, four man person uh, record company. So I think that uh, you know, the, the, the opportunities are wide open. I see. Now with, with Amazon and iTunes, how do you feel about the new technology um, with people growing into uh, you know, newer technology and downloading and MP3 right. and now instead of buying the album, yeah. they are putting it on their MP3 players. I mean, it's like, it's, like it's, it's, it's what's happening, you know, right. and you just have to, uh, you can't stand in the way of progress, you know, and uh, so whether I like it or not, I just have to adapt, you know, I don't think that... Right. Uh, you know, I could stand in the way of a, a, a big wave and not get knocked down, so right. just have to go with the flow. Lenny, you've always been known, one of your biggest songs, Because mm -hmm. I Love You, yes. which I play on the radio, yes. and I love it a lot. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite parts of um, the song is when you do the oh, 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 oh for like 20 minutes straight. Uh -huh, uh, yeah. <laughs> How has that song changed you in this business, or when people go out and, and notice you and and sing to your music. How does that make you feel? Well, it makes you feel great, you know, uh, obviously. But, uh, you know, that song is very special. It never was a single, you know. Okay. And so a lot of people was like, you know, they're kind of flab flabbergasted about the fact that it never was a single. Mm. It was just on, on an album. And I did it and I did it twice. I did it once when I was on Motown. That was the first time. And I didn't have the talking in it. And it was a, a little faster. And I had a... Uh, a drummer by the name of Willie Sparks, who was the original drummer for Graham Central Station. And so him and I and Larry Graham, we were all friends. So Larry fired, uh, uh, fired, uh, fired him, and so then he started playing for me. And so, but he was used to playing a lot of, you know, funk stuff, you know, and so he played for me about a couple of months. He said, like, I love what you do, but right now, you know, I got to get back to this real funky stuff. And he said, so, but he said, but that song, Cause I Love You, is really, really good. He said, if I were you, I'd break it down and put some talking in it, you know. So I thought about it, you know, and then I was like, okay, I think I'm going to do that. So I broke it down, put some talking in it. Then I went to ABC Records and I re-recorded it. And then, as they say, the rest is history. Right. And it just kind of amazes me that I'll go places and I'll sing, and you'll have a grandparent who may be my age, and they're singing it, and then their kids are singing it, and then the little grandkids, and, you know, somebody's seven or eight, you know, oh, Mr. Lenny Williams, I love your song. And, you know, they do their oh, oh, oh impression for me. And so, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's humbling, but it's, uh, I guess it's a testament to, to doing something that, that, that strikes, uh, you know, a, a chord in people. And I was in a play once. You said I did it for 20 minutes. So I was in a play once. And so they was like, <laughs> okay, uh, if you want to win tickets to the play, you have to say, count up how many times Lenny Williams did oh, oh, oh in the song, right? Okay. And so then I think it was David Talbert uh, that said to me, okay, Lenny, uh, how many times did you do it? I'm like, I don't know. He said, well, that's your job. I'm like, I tried it and I said, like, I can't do it. I can't count it up. It was, I was just, it's too confusing for me. So I, I, I don't know. The jury's still out on how many times I say, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, that, that's a bet that we probably have to make someday. <laughs> one day, yes, right. You, you be the one to count it up. Right? All right. <laughs> yeah, Sounds yeah. good. But you know, it is a trademark. Everyone knows yes. Lenny Williams by that song. Yes. Because it's such a staple and it's, it's a really, really good song. Actually, a, a friend of mine, which we probably know, Mr. Steve Harvey, comedian. Yes. Huh? Um, I remember I hadn't heard that song for a while and, and we just played it so much that I was like, 
wow, I could feel the love, mm -hmm. the frustration, the every emotion you could feel with that song. Yeah, because I think love is a powerful love thing. Love is a powerful thing. And I think uh, the, the reason that that song uh, resonates with so many people and women, you know, to, to get a chance to, uh, you know, to hear a man, you know, cry, you know, uh, in a song and say that he cries. And then I think a lot of men, uh, in a way, I'm a conduit for them. They may not cry, but, you know, it's okay, well, my boy Lenny will he crying for me, you know, put it on, you know, and uh, it's like, I'm not going to cry, but, you know, here's Lenny, he'll do it for me. So, you know, it, uh, it's, it's been an amazing song for me. I, you know, put, uh, then, then all the, after Steve Harvey did it in the Kings of Comedy, yes. then all the young rappers started sampling it, you know, Scarface, Twista, Kanye West, uh, Trey Songs, and, uh, you know, I had three daughters in the, uh, college at the same time, so I was able to put them all through school, you know, through that, yeah, so that's that's a good part of the music business, you know, mm -hmm. it's like I own the publishing to that okay. song, so, you know, for all the youngsters that are out there watching uh, this television show, mm -hmm. you know, realize that it is the music business, and so because I own the publishing, okay. uh, and, uh, you know, I wrote it with a friend of mine, and then uh, I own the publishing, I was able to reap the benefits uh, of, uh, of uh, the windfall that came of its popularity and people. Now educate yeah. me on this about mm -hmm. the music industry. What are the rules that, uh, for example, a new artist mm -hmm. wants to sample a more seasoned older artist mm -hmm. like yourself? Mm -hmm. Is there a 10 second rule that you have to pay the artist, a 20 second sample? How does that work? Well, basically if, if it's recognizable. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, if, you know, if I wanted to come over and, uh, you know, let's just say borrow, uh, a, a teaspoon of sugar from you, okay. and if I needed it, okay. and you wanted to sell it, you could put any price you wanted to on it. You know, so basically, uh, if a person wants it bad enough, and 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 you own the commodity, then you can put whatever price you want to put on it. You know, so uh, I think in one of the songs that uh, Ma Mariah Carey sings, and then I, in a little, just a little bit, she said, "If you think you're lonely now," and that's all. You know. A Bobby Womack song that she put in there, but I was at um, one of the award shows and Bobby got an award as a writer and a publisher for that. And so I'm sure not only did he get the award, but there was some money that went along with that. Right. And it was just a small part of it, you know. So uh, when I first, when sampling became, you know, such a big thing, uh, people would call me about sampling and I would just say, okay, yeah, go ahead and sample it. And I'd give them a price right then. And then I found out subsequently that what you should do is wait and let them do the song first. Okay. And then, depending on how much they do of the song, is you know, how much you would charge them. So you try to be fair because you want people to continually come back to you. Right. Uh, so, you know, you try to be, be fair with people. Well, and you also don't want to get gypped off at the same time. No, you don't want you, to get gypped off. You know off the off. value of your music, you know right. the value of your talent, and the hard work that it took to put into that song. So you, you, you have to be reasonable with you the You have price. to be reasonable, right, with the price, right, and, uh, you know, to keep people coming back and also to, you know, to make a fair fair profit for yourself, yeah. But if I wanted to sample, like, say, one of your songs, I'd get a discount, right? Oh, most definitely you'd get a discount. 15% off? Yeah, but why not? Yes, right, why not? Yes, we could do that for sure. Yes, yeah. Let's talk about talent today and R&B music today. Mm -hmm. How do you feel these artists, or do, is there anyone in particular of this time that you really enjoy, you like their music, do you like how they write their songs, mm -hmm. or you like the melodies? Yeah, I, I'm, I, I love uh, Anthony Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he's an excellent performer. Uh, I like Neo. Yeah, I think he writes great songs, and he seems like a uh, like a consummate performer. You know, he dances, and and then he also uh, seems like he likes uh, old school. Uh, not only point just old school R and B, but I I noticed like a little Sammy Davis Jr. in him, or things like that. So yes, I think that those are two artists that I I really like a lot. Yeah. What about music, uh, R&B music today? Mm -hmm. Do you feel that some of these artists are just making albums to make albums, to sell, or do you feel like there's really good quality of R&B music out there? Yeah, I, I really do. You know, a lot of times people, you know, they bemoan the fact of what the you know young artists are doing, but I say, you know, it's their time, you know, and uh, and so I just like, uh, you know, say, hey, hey, get out the way, you know, so I, I just kind of get out the way and listen to it. Um, I, you know, I think sometimes, uh, 
with some of the rap, you know, that uh, the lyrical content, you know, you know, I might challenge them on that, you know, because I used to work with a lot of rappers and, you know, the only thing they could do is cuss and whatever. And I'm saying, well, what if Walt Disney called you up and said, I want to do a movie for four year olds and I've got, I want to pay somebody a million dollars to do it. And if that's all you can do, you know, you've kind of pigeonholed yourself, you know, that, that's a million dollars somebody else is going to get. So, you know, you should kind of be open, you know, to, to doing other things. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I, I think that the, 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 you know, the music is in good hands and, uh, and people are buying it, so uh, obviously, you know, it's resonating with somebody. You know that uh, you know the record sales are, are you know people are buying the records, they're downloading them, so you know they wouldn't do it if they didn't if they didn't like it. And I think that's the, uh, in a way, uh, that's the litmus test for, for good music, is that uh, people buy it or they sing it or they dance to it or whatever. Now, you you touched the subject on rappers. Mm -hmm. Do you feel? Um, the music, rap music now, it seems like some of it is very vulgar mm -hmm. and it's a lot of cussing mm -hmm. and shooting and uh, do you think, uh, and, and, and insulting women or mm -hmm. you know calling them certain names, mm -hmm. do you think that's a form of expression, a form of music or is it in a way, um, a way to prove themselves? I think it's a little bit of, every, of all of it, you know. Uh, I mean I've worked with a lot of rappers, I've done a song with uh, Snoop, I've done a song with Too Short, uh, everybody's. I, I wrote a song, and my daughter's good friend was short, and so she's like, "I'm gonna get short to sing on the rap on your song." And everybody's saying, "Well, you know, is he gonna say his favorite word in your song?" Oh. And then I was like, what, "Are you gonna tell him?" I said, "Well, I'm not a rapper. I'm not gonna tell Too Short how to rap." You know, right. I mean, so I was like, "You know, I, I'm just not gonna say anything to him." You know, and he didn't say it. You know, and so then everybody was like, "Oh, I guess he did out of respect for you." I was like, "Well, maybe it was. I don't know mm -hmm. because I never." talk to him about it. You know, I'm okay. just like, hey, you know, you want to rap on a song? And he did it. You know, so I've worked with uh, Scarface, different people, okay. uh, something with E-40, you know, but um, I think when talking to a lot of rappers, you know, they say that this is, a lot of the content of their music is what, what they see, you know. Okay. You know, they see shooting in their neighborhoods. They, they see violence, you know, they see people fighting for, you know, over just insignificant things, you know. And uh, maybe some of the women in their lives, you know, may act a certain way. You know, maybe their mothers could be, or some of the, you know, could be on crack or, or be, uh, you know, selling their bodies or whatever, you know, in front of them or you know, whatever, and their friends know about it. So as a consequence, I think that that's the way they label. I mean, it's unfortunate and it's not right, but I think that, you know, they may just have that picture of all women. And so, uh, so I think that for every uh, reaction, there's an action. So everything that, that people do, there's a reason, there's a cause and effect. And uh, so I, I'm, I'm not uh, excusing them, uh, but uh, just in talking to people, a, a lot of rappers, it's like, hey, that's what I see, you know. Okay. So, you know, we go to movies and we see, you know, violence. And I know, you know, there was this big push a long time ago to, you know, make the rappers clean up. And then it's like, wow, I went to see a Steven Seagal movie. And I'm like, the first four minutes, it's like 40 people got killed. And I'm like, okay, well, you got to, you know, you know, you got to be judicious in your criticism of violence. And so, uh, you know, so we just go to movies and literature and all of the other stuff. Yeah. Well, yes, you do have a really good point there because, you know, I see art as and music as a form of expression. Mm -hmm. I, I think sometimes you could go a little too far. Mm -hmm. And then when the younger generation is looking at you and watching these videos or watching these movies, right. and they go out and do something yeah. as bad as Columbine. Right. Then you go, hello, right. what are we doing with our music and on television? Exactly right, yeah. But as long as you keep on making good yes, uh, um, R&B music, Okay. or as we call it, love making music, yes. we will be extremely happy with you. I appreciate it. I'm going to keep <laughs> on doing that too. Yes, well, good. Right. Yeah, because, uh, you know, I, I love it. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a part of me. I've got, what, six kids, 10 grandkids. So obviously I know a little something about love okay. making and love music, yes. That's good. That's yes. really, really good. Lenny, um, before you finish this album, how much of the music that you, how much of the music you did not put on this album? You know, I know a lot of artists make 25, 30, 40 songs mm -hmm. and um, only put about 16 tracks on an album. How much did you leave in the vault? Uh, quite a bit, yeah. So I, I write all the time. So, okay. uh, so I'm always writing, writing with friends, writing by myself. And so uh, 
like I'm working on a new CD now, you know, with some new music, and I've got about 30 songs, and, you know, trying to see, well, if we put this record out, you know, uh, how many songs are we going to use? And so it's just, uh, you go by consensus, you know, you ask your friends and your associates, you know, what, what songs they think are the best ones for right now, and, okay. and uh, hopefully, you know, they, everybody picks the right write music and sometimes you know you say oh I should have put this song on with this you know but uh, you know you still have it so you you still and then now with uh, like with iTunes and things like that you can just put a song up okay. you know just by itself if you if you get the unction to do so so you don't necessarily have to put it on an album you could yeah. uh, make it into a single yeah right if you don't if you you know you don't have to make it into a, a, a big project you can just say oh this song sounds great I think I'm gonna put this out I've never done that but I you know I, I do know people who have done it you know so I'm like I'm an unfinished business. I'm going to do that, too, one of these days. Like, oh, Lenny's got a song up there he just wrote last night. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. We know that you're going to continue making great music, which is great. Is there any other thing besides music um, that you want to do? I know you did, you've did. you done plays and you've done music. Anything else that you would aspire to do? Well, right now I'm uh, involved with a couple of organizations, and we uh, – are working on healthcare. Yes, yes healthcare right. partners. The health healthcare partners, and then I'm also involved with a company up in the Bay Area called Lazarix uh, Foundation, and we're working on uh, getting people to, especially minorities, to get involved in uh, clinical trials to try to uh, you know, get people to be able to have healthier lives, and you know, and not just uh, if you get diabetes, it's not a death sentence anymore. You know, they have great medicine. People have to you know just go to the doctor. So do, doing that, and uh, so those are. It's one of my causes right now. So you're being a spokesperson. For yeah, I've been a healthcare. spokesperson right for healthcare, right? That's good. Mm -hmm. What's your feel on um, the issue with President Obama and um, care for the elderly or insurance? With health, with the healthcare and the Obamacare, yes. as they call it. Yeah, the Obamacare. Well, well, I think that his his heart is in the right place. I mean, I think that uh, I think everybody wants uh, you know good health care for for people. I I support him. I, you know, I vote for him, and uh, I wish him you know the best. And, uh, you know, I think, you know, he's got a, all eyes are on him right now, you know, and, uh, you know, so uh, fairly and unfairly and, uh, you know, so every little thing he does uh, is going to be under a microscope. Yeah. Now, speaking of health, you look great for your age. Mm -hmm. And how do you, what do you do? What's your secret? What's your regimen? What can I tell my grandfather or my dad to say, you need to start doing this because Lenny Williams is doing it? Well, I get up every morning and say my prayers and then I, just lean over and stretch, you know, for okay. 5, 10, 15 minutes, you know. That's it? Yeah, and I stretch, and then I go for a walk. Oh, okay. I go for a walk, try to walk a couple miles, two or three miles, or you know, go to the gym if I'm in a, you know, if, if I have a real busy day, and I know that walking three miles is going to take up a lot of time, I go to the gym, go on the treadmill, uh, and do that, and have a jump rope, and, okay. you know, I like boxing, so sometimes I, I take my grandson to the gym, and then I'll, I don't box, but I hit the bag. I, you know, just do something. You know, just uh, I always yeah. try to stay active. Yeah. Well, you stay active. You yeah. look great. Mm -hmm. We expect more music from you. At Most least definitely. another 50 albums. Uh -huh. yeah. So we want to tell our viewers to pick up uh, Unfinished Business, Lenny Williams. And I want to thank you so very much for being here today. My pleasure. Can I hear you do a little oh 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 for me? Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, My Lenny pleasure. Williams. Yes. It is the Nautica Show. I'm Nautica De La Cruz. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Nautica De La Cruz, N-A-U-T-I-C-A-D-E-L-A-C-R-U-Z, or on Facebook, Miss Nautica De La Cruz. Good night.